All right, YouTube, super excited for Clear Vision Wednesday today. Today is a topic that is really often not talked about a lot, and it's peripheral vision. Um, a lot of people are focused on their central acuity and don't really think about their peripheral vision. And just to backtrack, I'm Claudia Mühlenweg. I am a holistic vision um, improvement teacher. I've been doing this for over a decade now, and I'm the founder of the or creator of the Naturally Clear Vision Method. And I have a super, super special guest on today because she invented a tool that will make it so much easier to actually improve your peripheral vision than what I've been doing. So I'm, I cannot wait to hear more about this tool. And Irina Castle is one of my former students and has an incredible idea and has been working with athletes. But I want her to share her story. So let me highlight you. Um, Welcome, Irina. Welcome to the show. And uh, why don't you tell us, like, how did you get into this whole thing? Like, you know, the little story of what happened. Well, hi, Claudia. First of all, thank you so much for having me. It is a pleasure and honor. And I am so excited to be able to uh, get in front of your students and your audience. So thank you for that. Um, how I got to natural vision improvement. Well, that's a story that most teachers probably don't have. Um, it has been over two years now um, when my husband and I were watching our boys play soccer. And as we were watching the team, as we were watching them, um, we just kind of realized and observed that when they play, they just focus straight forward on the ball and they completely ignore what is around them, right? Uh, they ignore their passes, they ignore the players that are behind them. It's just everything forward, forward, and then the game becomes very um, kind of um, kind of very simple for them, but they are not playing as a team, right? And so I started thinking, well, what can be done about it and how can we develop their peripheral vision so that they get better at their game? And as I was doing that, um, I started searching for different options of developing peripheral vision, different tools. And, um, you know, I came across some really um, advanced methods that require like special facilities and special uh, big rooms that have wonderful, you know, lights and, and wonderful different devices that train periphery. But that is not something that could be used at home or on a field with little kids or, or even with college kids, right? It's not something that everybody can afford and everybody can go to. And so I kept looking and um, came across natural vision improvement, the Bates methods, the Alexander methods, and, and what have you, and started really digging deep and deep into that and got absolutely fascinated uh, by the results that you can um, receive through natural vision improvement and the practices. And it's just, you know, one thing led to another, and eventually, um, I kind of combined the two and developed a system that teaches athletes how to expand their peripheral view, plus some other visual um, skills that they need in playing sports, whether it's soccer, basketball, baseball, volleyball, you know, tennis, what have you. And, um, and, and at the end, um, as part of the system, I also developed a tool that kind of goes with it and that helps them with the practices. I just think this is so cool because, I mean, I've been doing this for over a decade and just the idea, like, you know, like you said, most vision teachers do this work because we used to wear glasses and we had really bad, poor vision and we solved that. And But you noticed you saw a problem out there in the field, like literally in the field with, you know, your kids. And I'm sure this goes for a lot of, you know, um, leisure sports or not even, pro but even professional athletes where they just don't have, like their vision actually you know, makes kind of what happens is that the vision affects their, you know, their, their performance on the field. So it's not just, you know, the eyesight for reading stuff, but actually they're, they're not as good as they could be. So I love that you just went ahead and developed a tool. I mean, this is a huge production, you know, developing a prototype. And I mean, I, I can't wait to hear more about this tool. So I know you have a little presentation for us to kind of explain why you came up with this and why you developed this because it's a lot of work to kind of do this you know come up with a tool and to also learn all these things that you had to learn so i'm i'm so impressed and i share a little bit with us 
like, you know, what, whatever you want to share with that. But I know you have some slides that kind of show the tool and why it's so amazing and also affordable. Like you said, you know, right, like professional athletes might have these fancy facilities and these, you know, goggles and other stuff that cost thousands of dollars. But what about everybody else? Right. And, and also beyond sports, you know, we all need good peripheral vision. So take it away. Exactly. And you said it. And before I jump into a presentation, and it's a short one just to make sure, <laughs> but uh, before I jump into it, let me just kind of make the connection of why are we here? Why are we talking to the audience that really loves natural vision improvement um, about these glasses that were developed ultimately for athletics, right? So as I said, as I was developing the program, I was really going through every available method of uh, peripheral um, improvement and visual improvement that I could possibly find. And the way this was all put together was really based off of Bates method principles, natural vision improvement principles, and ultimately translated into what would be suitable for the athletes, what would be suitable um, for an execution in a regular practice on a field in um, just any town and any little field out there versus a specialized place, right? So what I am saying is the goggles that I developed, yes, I developed them for the sports and um, they are wonderful for the young athletes and college athletes and even pros, you know, not every single professional player actually has developed peripheral vision. But at the same time, you will see that the attributes that these glasses have uh, are super beneficial to anything that we teach um, our students as we develop their vision naturally. And I love that, especially on the computer, right? We develop this tunnel vision. And so peripheral vision is definitely, especially when you wear glasses, right? There is this underdeveloped sense of periphery, which is really the relaxed state. You have that central focus, but you also have that wide awareness. And um, glaucoma is one of these eye diseases or retinitis pigmentosa where you lose your peripheral vision. And as we get older, you know, a lot of these eye diseases are called age-related, which is not really age-related. But as we get older, you know, the risk of, you know, reducing your peripheral vision, I mean, just not seeing a car coming or not seeing some other thing coming. Or if you're like a woman, right, like we might not see or we're jogging or we're running, we might not see something happening in the peripheral field because we're so, like you said, forward focused. And I know you talk about 360 vision, and I'm really interested in that, because as far as I know, we can't see behind us, but I'm, you know, I'm really interested in, like, talking about more about this tool and how it can really help everybody, not just athletes or kids, but how it can really be an amazing tool for everybody to improve their visual field, which is really big part of good, healthy vision anyway. So go ahead. Right, so then let's go ahead and jump in so that I can reveal the tool and reveal what it can do. Very good. So as, as Claudia was saying, you know, peripheral vision is part of the way we see. And what is responsible for peripheral vision is visual rods. And those who are involved in natural vision improvement already know that visual rods are ultimately placed on the outside uh, of the eye, right? They help us see and they are on the outside. It is the cones that are closer to the optic nerve on the inside. And while the cones make us see or help us see uh, light and detail, the visual rods help us see um, movement, help us see um, other, you, you know, seeing in the dark and, and other uh, parts of what is important in the vision. And, and so much is done via periphery. So much seeing is done via periphery, right? Claudia was talking about the 360 and there are really kind of two ways to look at the 360. The first way is um, periphery. Sometimes when we think about it, we're just thinking this way, right? To the left, to the right. But in reality, there is a lower periphery, there is an upper periphery, there is an inner periphery. And as we kind of plan, as we kind of learn how to see better and we develop our vision, um, it is super beneficial as we look forward to be aware of everything that is around us, right? 360 
up and down. The same thing is true about perception of space. That's the other way of seeing 360, right? We can see in the front and all the way up until about 180 to maybe 210 degrees for those who have extremely well-developed periphery. But on top of that, once you actually develop a really strong perception of space, what happens to you is that you get much stronger kind of sensorial awareness of what is behind you. Right. And so while you cannot physically see what is behind you, you get just a really great sense of what's happening. And so your view is up and down, left and right, forward and backwards. And that's the way you ultimately expand the way you see the whole world. And like I mentioned before, and Claudia said so, right, in the dark, we use peripheral rods. Uh, peripheral rods help us see movement as well. So, and there is another thing that I think is really super beneficial that peripheral uh, kind of proficiency or proficiency of the peripheral vision kind of brings. And that is that it has impact on our everyday life functions. So it's not really just the seeing itself, but it has impact on everything that we do every day, like reading, while reading, right? Like for reading, one would think that you really need the focus. And that is true. And at the same time, if you have good peripheral view, it's easier to read your eyes just quicker to what you're seeing as you read along. Same thing for walking, right? You want to see what's around you. You don't want to step somewhere where you didn't want to step. You want to see people that are around you. And most importantly, I think in driving, just knowing that a car is approaching, car is on the left when you want to change lanes, those are all moments when having exceptional peripheral vision is very, very beneficial. So that's why when I was thinking about developing the program for athletes and developing the tool, I was thinking, how do I do that so that I can respect the periphery? and really develop a tool that can, um, that allows the students to see ultimately everywhere, right? And so you, what you can see on these pictures is me actually wearing a monolens um, in, the, in the tool. And you can see that I have an opening going up, going down, going to a side. Um, it's really well visible on the, on the side image. And why, or so I just told you why this was done that way, but how does it really work? So it works because the lenses that are part of this tool, they are not curved as traditional lenses, right? They have a very special shape and you can see that they are open at the bottom, they are open at the side, they are open at the top so that you could really see everywhere as you kind of practice what, um, whatever practice you're doing, whether it is for periphery specifically or whether it is for other um, vision practices. So I just mentioned five lenses. So let me see, hopefully you can see it well on the video. The way the tool works is it consists of a frame and the if frame- you show the, Sorry, Irvina, if you want to show the, the actual, not the screens, then you probably should stop the screen share or you just, because we can only see you on YouTube, like small. really small, yeah. Okay, so let me go ahead and stop that for just a moment. And that way I can show you live and then we can just go through a quick recap, right? But it consists of a frame and then exchangeable lenses. Right, there are five different lenses and the way you put them in, you just kind of click it in and it holds. And then if you want a different one, you take it out and you quickly put another one in, right? There we go. And I can start practicing. So you basically have different, what I could tell you have different widths, right? Some are like bigger blocking more periphery and there's like a yes. few different ones. There, yes, yes, that is very true. So there are two major lenses that are for peripheral development. 
there is a lens that is a little bit more narrow. That one is mostly for binocular vision training, for depth perception training. Um, and then for the athletes, it's eye body coordination, which is really important as well. And then, of course, you know, we all know that as part of visual development, working with one eye or the other eye is absolutely critical, right? And so we have a left and right monolens. So let me click back into the presentation. There we go. Very good. So here is a recap, right? Far periphery, lower and upper, near, lower and upper, binocular vision with the little lens, and then acuity, eye tracking, and binocular vision. And they all work on the same principle of selective vision obstruction, where we are choosing the amount of focus that we're blocking and choosing the, the amount of periphery that we leave unobstructed. And by doing so, and then using it during practice, we ultimately kind of promote a stronger connection between the unobstructed part of the eye and the visual cortex so that, uh, so that we can see better and so that we create visual habits that really allow us um, to see through the whole eye, not just, uh, not just the focus. Now I showed you the tool live, uh, but over here, you know, you can just have a look at some um, nice attributes. It was designed um, as a sport goggle, sports uh, glasses with a very sleek design. Uh, it's very flexible, very sturdy. It's designed with a very high end um, plastic. It's called nylon TR90 for those who want to know. And, um, and that really guarantees some flexibility of the product, right? It's not going to be prone to breaking and it's going to be long lasting. Additionally, and that is very often a problem with any tools that anybody makes at home is you can never find them, right? They are always kind of in a box somewhere and then you don't know where the box is or it doesn't fit. Um, so these goggles come in a pretty nice sturdy case. You can see it in the picture, right? And that guarantees that the goggles get really nicely organized. You have everything in one place. And for those who want to do something you know, extraordinary, like go for a walk or for a hike with one of these lenses to really give their periphery a boost. Uh, for those, there is a strap that can be easily attached or removed and you can make sure that your goggles never slip. And one last kind of teaser for those who really have done some training uh, with Claudia already and who are familiar with all those different little tools that you're supposed to gather and make yourself, these are line extensions that we currently have in development. Um, the most exciting one, and that is my absolute favorite because that has been always my struggle, is the nose card holder, right? How do you keep the nose card? in place on the right goggles, not having any frames uh, in a place where you don't want to have them. And so the nose card holder is a line extension that's coming up. And, um, you know, sometime in the first half of next year, we will also have pinhole lenses and then red and green lenses or red and blue lenses, um, depending on, on a preference. That is super awesome. So for amblyopia, the red and blue are red and green and the pinhole, like it's, oh my God, this is so exciting. So is that the end of your presentation? That is the end of my presentation. I wanted to keep it kind of easy nice. and, and short and sweet. Awesome, so awesome. I, I already I already got this, I already bought it. <laughs> but there's also like, there's a training, isn't there also a training protocol that you're giving? Because my question would be like, how long, you know, I mean, and I know we have quite, we have YouTube, we have people watching on YouTube. So let us know if you have any questions on YouTube, you can type them in the chat and Irina will answer them. But like in terms of how long would you use this every day? Like, let's say you're not an athlete as an example, right? You're just, a, you just want to work in your peripheral vision and you have protocols. Like how, like, is that something they can follow along every day? Or like, tell us a little bit more about the protocol that's included. 
Yes, absolutely. So the protocol that's going to be included with these goggles for uh, vision development really kind of leads you to um, what type of practices can you do with each of the lenses, right? And then you know that it is a little bit up to each student what works for them, right? We recommend to do 10, 15, 20 minutes a day of practices. But honestly, with, with goggles like that, it's really easy to just pop in a mono lens and go on with your day, right? And so you can do your activities that you normally do and just uh, not necessarily allocate specific time to um, to practicing, but you can just pop them on and do your, you know, homework, reading, um, regular work, whatever you want to do. Uh, for peripheral vision, right, that is a little bit um, more specific because, because if you are using the lenses that really block you fully, you can do anything but practice. But honestly, I think that doing something for five minutes, you know, taking a walk in your backyard, and just just paying attention to how the world is moving around you and how much further you can see um, all those tiny little bits and pieces will definitely help. Yeah, and I love, I mean, you can put this on in a hike. You mentioned a hike because a lot of times our peripheral vision, like you, you talked about, like at the, at the bottom, right? Like, you know, how many, when you get older, there's so many people falling, you know, because their peripheral vision isn't good. And so improving it. And also that I love that they are uh, giving you peripheral vision on the top because I don't have them here right now, but I use like, you know, cheap little glasses for occluders, you know, just, but they have a frame at the bottom and they block your top peripheral vision and even your bottom one. So I love that these are open on all sides, which is really, really amazing. So I can't wait. And there was a question here on my Zoom about the difference between the Kickstarter. So tell us just a little bit more because I know that you have, this is a prototype and building this in mass production is actually a huge financial endeavor. Also, in addition to all the time that you, you know, created this and you test, I know you tested this already with uh, soccer teams um, and they had great results, but like, tell us a little bit more about how can people get their hands on this tool if they want to. Okay, so yes, it has been a while. Like I said, I started working on this two years ago and we now got to the point when we are pre-selling these glasses on Kickstarter. And um, the delivery is actually currently scheduled for February, even though I am really hoping that it's going to be a nice Christmas present. But, you know, I can't promise that. So officially it's February and we're just hoping for the best that it's going to come early. Um, now, the connection with Kickstarter, those who had a chance to kind of pop in and maybe preview, you can see that the whole Kickstarter campaign was developed for athletes, right? Um, as I was developing this product, this was kind of the course of action for me. Um, but I just felt as I was putting everything together that it would be so sad if we couldn't make it available to those students of natural vision improvement. And so, the goggles are what they are, whether you use them for sports or whether you use them for natural vision improvement, they're the same tool, right? Like I said, super easy to use, easy to put away with all those features that really are respecting every single rule of natural vision improvement. The Kickstarter campaign was developed for athletes. So all of the arguments and explanations and, and details of, um, of the campaign are to help athletes understand what this is for, right? It is very new in athletics in a way of bringing something like this um, visual education or, or eyesight development to anyone who is not playing professional sports right? And so I put a lot of effort into explaining the benefits of uh, what the tool can do and then what vision actually does um, for their play. But for you guys, you already know all of these benefits, right? And so um, if you are interested in the tool, go there, purchase the tool as is, um, regardless of the fact of what the campaign exactly explains, right? And um, I think that's the connection. I think that's just the one thing that you should be aware of. 
Yeah, so Kickstarter, we are streaming this live on September 22nd, the first day of fall in 2021. Um, and if you're watching this replay like a few years down the line, um, you can always go to Overbound Athletics athletic and the, the all the links are in the in the show notes so you can you can find all this and you can purchase them there right now it's a kickstarter so like you said and i've backed many projects on kickstarter you kind of you you put your money in and that helps you to produce those and if for some reason this doesn't work or whatever or you know wherever you produce it then you will get your money back so there's no risk and like you know you you're paying for something that you're not going to get um, but with all the shipping stuff going on in the COVID, so there could be delays in getting this tool. But here's the thing. It's like the, there's a deal that expires tomorrow on the 23rd, where you also get, you want to share the ball because you also have a ball that you talked about binocular vision, because it's not just a peripheral uh, visual field builder. It's also a tool that you can use for um, binocular vision. If you have amblyopia, strabismus, if your depth perception is weak, you can use this tool in combination with this ball that you can get right now, right? You can kind of, yeah, there you go, right? You can do the ball toss that we often do with tennis balls, but tennis balls bounce around. And, you know, th this is a, like, talk a little bit about that ball because I'm I, I'm excited about that little Absolutely. ball. Absolutely. I think the ball is a little bit of a bonus. I uh, developed that much later, right? Because as I was training binocular vision, really with these narrow lens um, and throwing, like you said, a tennis ball over my head. The trouble was that it was falling everywhere and rolling too far. So I decided to just, um, you know, create one. And it's a, it, it weighs about 94 grams. It's made of PU leather. So it's super, super soft and nice to hold in your hand. And when you toss it, it stays in your hand. It doesn't bounce. And if it falls, it stays next to you. So you don't have to run around the room and try to kind of find your ball, right? And so like you said, right now there is an offer on Kickstarter. It ends at noon tomorrow. And uh, not only the goggles are um, offered at a great price, but the ball comes free with it. It's a limited time offer and limited quantity offer. So if somebody is interested, go in there and check it out. And if you are thinking of, uh, of getting it, if you really like these goggles, then go ahead and snatch one. Um, but um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'm super excited. I can't wait. I'm going to get those for all my clients because it's, you know, like, like and I want to show like what I currently do for my nose card. It's kind of this blue tech kind of, you know, like wobbly thing. And it, I mean, but having a tool where you can just snap it in and you can easily switch those things. And I know this is a future piece. This is not part of the original Kickstarter because that's going to be a future edition. But just having a tool that you can use for all these different things, because I got some um, green, blue, um, sorry, red, blue glasses or red, green ones from an optometry store. And they're really, really cheaply made. And the lenses fall out and it's just... And then you have all these pairs. They're really, honestly, very crappy quality. Um, and so I can't wait to have a tool where you can have one base and then you can, and the, like you said, you don't have all these, you don't need to have all these things flying around and taking up space. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm super excited. And if, again, if you watch this later um, and you you can always go to our website and order it then if, if it's beyond the Kickstarter. Um, so there was a good question here in the Zoom. Um, I don't see a question on YouTube, but uh, what if you have a small face? Can you talk, that's actually a great question. Can you talk a little bit about, because it's for athletes, right? So for players, right? They have, it has to fit snugly on your face, otherwise it would fall off. Like how does yeah. it work for different face sizes? So you can see over here, the frame is super flexible. It's ultimately designed for anybody who is 12 years old or older right? It kind of adjusts to your face. And even for younger athletes, I have used it with athletes who were eight years old and you place it in and it, it holds. In addition to that, like I said, we have a adjustable strap. Stuff. Yeah. And so if for whatever reason, your face is so small that you kind of need to, um, you know, tie it in, you put the strap in and then it can close in and it kind of holds the goggles in place. So, um, so I think I think that you should not be worried at all about the size. The size is really nicely fitting. And the orange piece over here, the orange part, that is a silicone. Um, 
kind of padding. And that also is an anti-slip padding. So all of these different features really guarantee that it's not going to fall off of your face, even if your face is a little bit smaller. That's awesome. So you really thought this through from all angles, from sweating, from face sizes, from everything you can think of. So yeah, there's no more. Um, can you play t tennis with it? Yeah, I think for tennis, that would be amazing, right? To, to improve. I mean, it's not the same as you have, you have a team and you have to, you know, you're missing that person that's free and you don't throw them the ball. But for tennis, it's also really, right? You can use it for any sport. You can use it for vision improvement. You can use it for hiking, for running, for walking. Obviously, when you run, you want to make sure that you either use the smaller one or that you're, you're running on terrain that's not like really like, you know, or you really experience, you know, obviously you want to make sure you're safe. But yeah, tennis should be awesome with this, right? I mean, I don't know if yes, you have anything. Absolutely. I mean, one of the important things for tennis uh, from visual perspective is ball tracking, right? You need to be able to track the ball. You need to be able to judge the distance and the speed of the ball, right? So for tennis specifically, the narrow lens that helps you develop uh, the dynamic acuity um, and helps you make sure that your binocular vision is as perfect as it can possibly be. Absolutely. Now, you know, to your point, I always say safety first, right? You don't want to do anything that you're not comfortable with. You always want to make sure that you're safe. If you're practicing, flat surface is the best, right? Um, especially if you're working with the larger lenses, make sure you have plenty of space so that you don't run into things. Now, as your peripheral vision develops, it becomes easier and easier, but especially at the beginning, right? Be very, very careful with it to make sure that while you're improving your vision, you don't hurt yourself. But honestly, I have not had any issues with it and I have athletes running on the field uh, with a ball and with the goggles and um, you know they don't really have any problems. But please, please, when you use them, you know, just use your best judgment and, and your ability um, so that you get the benefit uh, from it versus versus the opposite. Well, we've done hikes, you know, where, where we use post-its and post-its, you know, you stick them on the face and they don't give you the top vision. They just give you bottom and sides. But I've done whole hikes like in the, in the almost in the dark, you know, where is because you talked about the rod cells actually our night vision and our peripheral vision cells. So, you know, this is like so flimsy and then you sweat and it falls off, but it's a really, you want to start with baby steps, right? You want to start with baby steps, get more comfortable, maybe use the smaller one and then go to the bigger one. But yeah, I'm so, thank you so much for being here today and sharing your tool with us. And I can't wait because I would have never had the energy to come up with something. And it's a lot of work. And I also love that you, it comes with a little protocol. So for those of you interested, it comes with a, how many different protocols are like, can you just say one last thing about the protocol that they're going to get? If yeah, so, absolutely. so for the athletes, there is about 70 different protocols, right? For natural vision improvement, it's a little bit less. It really kind of showcases the most common practices that we do as um, vision teachers, right? And so the students will have access to that um, so that they know exactly what lens is for what and how to leverage um, the, um, the practices that they are either already familiar with or it can be their first encounter to these practices. So yeah, so even if you're brand new, you've never used, you never worked with a teacher, you're gonna get protocols that you can use with this tool. So it's not like you just get the tool and that you're like, now what, you know? So thank you so much for being here and um, anything, any last thing you wanna share or any kind of last uh, thing you wanna share with us before we close the YouTube live? Yes, uh, just, you know, I am very excited about it. This is a tool that I really wanted to develop for a long time. I am happy that it can benefit the natural vision community and any additional information can be either found on overboundathletics.com or if you decide to purchase the glasses, there is going to be a little code as part of your package and that's going to lead you to the right place and the right protocol for you. Awesome. So thank awesome. you so much, Claudia. This has been a pleasure and um, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing this with us today. And that was it for Clear Vision Wednesday today. So for those of you that are in my Clear Vision Club, we're going to have a little bit of extra time with Irina. 
uh, on on Zoom, but for you on YouTube, goodbye. And I don't see any questions on YouTube, so goodbye. If you are on YouTube, you're watching this later and you have a question, post it in the comments. I will go in and answer all those questions. Um, but see you next week. Goodbye on YouTube.